A lot of people really don't understand what's possible. They think they don't have enough land to create something of real meaning and beauty. But here you can see just in a couple of small acres, you can create a rich amount of habitat, you can create water and life and productivity on landscape, and really beautiful aesthetic areas to enjoy a high quality of life. So a really common question we get is, well, what do I do with a small landscape? A lot of our projects are bigger, broad acre, and a lot of people don't have very large landscapes to work with. You might only have a couple of acres or five or 10 acres, but that's still actually a tremendous amount to work with. In a lot of SEPS projects, one hectare, two and a half acres, is enough for a family to produce everything they need to survive. And so today I'm gonna to give you a little bit of a tour of what something could look like on a smaller project, on a smaller scale, really just family gardens, a small homestead, what you can do on five acres or less. The smaller your landscape is, the more important, the more critical good management is. So water is the foundational building block of life. And when we're really limited in how much land we have, we have to be really cautious and careful with the amount of water that we have. So in this case, you can see the home behind me and there's a driveway, there's a shop on this other side. And so there's a couple of hard surfaces creating a lot of runoff. We were able to, in our site assessment here, analyze a ravine starting to form from all the runoff from the house and the driveways and a potential site to hold that water. Now, in our test slice, the results weren't super good. They, it was too low for what I would usually go for in terms of clay content, so it was less than 30% clay. But because I knew the owners really well, being my parents, uh, I was able to convince them to go for it as a kind of experimental to see what's possible. And we really achieved a nice result, even with those marginal materials. So this is a rain-fed system taking all the runoff from the home and the shop and the driveways and any hard surfaces and feeding that into the water body down below. Now also we have these terrace gardens in between. We have a couple of areas where water is helping infiltrate into the ground. It's growing all this irrigation free food in the future. We've got trees, bushes, all sorts of fruits, vegetables, herbs of all kind, and then feeding down into a water body that really holds that water throughout the year. Additionally, there's a circulation system to pump the water from the pond up to this waterway, and then it flows in between the rocks and the gravel where the bacteria that filter and clean the water live. It's this biofilter, the water's being pumped out of the upper levels of the pond through this biofilter back into the pond creating a bunch of food for the fish that have been recently stocked into the pond. So this system is a really beautiful feature. It's nice to be near water every day. There's a ton of wildlife, insects, everything that's now dependent on this water. But additionally, it's producing food, it's producing medicine, and it's really producing beauty and joy to the people living here. So here behind me, you see the water body. It's really helping store that water, provide it to the landscape, recharge the ground. And you can also see it's a wonderful place to take a dip in the summer. And so not just is this offsetting the hard surfaces that we have, the home, the shop, the roads. Now we're much more neutral in terms of our groundwater impact, in terms of our aquifer, our hydrology impact. Now all the hard surfaces that we've created are flowing to this which now we're hyper infiltrating that water so we're really allowing this landscape to charge back up with what we're forcing to run off now additionally this is producing protein even there's trout growing in the water now we have the circulation system growing food for the trout so they're not fed at all and so you really have this area that produces fish for protein it produces fruits, it produces vegetables, it produces medicines and herbs, and all with very little care and maintenance. So we've got this lovely dock with some bench chairs. So you can see it's a really nice place to come and cool off and enjoy 
in the summertime. You'll see fish biting at the surface, feeding off of all of the food that grows naturally for them. The water just chocked full of tadpoles and salamanders. And then we've got some nice rainbow trout uh, and even some lake trout. And so this creates a huge amount of life and habitat. Everything from blue heron to ducks to the fox that comes to drink from it every day. All of these wonderful big rocks came out of the project site. And so we were able to make these nice features like this rock you can actually dive off of. A shallow dive, but a dive nonetheless. We've got some shallow areas with stones for heat sinks in the water. You'll see the fish and other critters feeding there all the time. We've got these other heat sinks and stones to sit at the water's edge, a dock and a Holzer monk pipe, more stones. This is actually one of my favorite features I've ever built because it's just so simple but so effective. So it's a wall of really big boulders down below here where you can't see in the water all the way up to these rocks on top which are actually the small ones believe it or not. Now this creates a huge amount of habitat. All of these nooks and crannies, there's always frogs in here and they actually know to sing in these coves because it amplifies their song like an amphitheater and an orchestra. And so you can see you can actually dive right off of these rocks. It's very deep, just a little bit out from the edge. It's probably 10 feet deep, three feet out from the edge here. So you can jump right into the water. And it's just this wonderfully simple little habitat, human feature. These are wonderful to sit and sunbathe on after swimming in the water. And the way that this water comes back up into the rocks makes all of these small little eddies and coves and habitat for the aquatic critters. So here you see some young fruit trees starting to come into their own with cover crop, improving the soil underneath them. And these trees are just a handful of years old, but they're still really starting to come on. Uh, we had a really late frost this year, lost some fruit for sure, but they're still gonna produce uh, even in these early couple of years. And you can see they're really getting healthy and establishing well and off to a great start. So here we've got the start of the system, this biofilter where water circulated from the higher levels of the pond so it doesn't heat up the pond too much, circulated through this rock armored spillway. And so in and around all these little water areas live all the microorganisms that filter and clean the water. And so this is really part of the filtration system for the pond, but also a really nice aesthetic feature. You can see it's right here in the middle of the garden. All the fruit trees, berry bushes, herbs, and cover crop. And then what happens is the water from all of the roof of the house comes down. It hits these few terraces. One, two terraces. And so what happens is all the water from the house comes down, it hits these two or really three terraces with the garden that helps infiltrate the water. It meets up with this spillway. It flows down into a really small waterway and then across the driveway and into the main pond. So this little pond does a great job at heating up a little bit more quickly and therefore growing more insects and aquatic life. This inevitably ends up down in the bigger pond feeding the fish. And so while we're circulating this water, filtering and cleaning it, we're also providing habitat and providing more growth within the water, feeding the fish down below. So with this pond having a pretty poor clay content in the scheme of things and just being rain fed, it's really ephemeral. And so we really need to normalize ephemerality, how water levels are not usually to the top year round. In the long dry times in the summers, those water levels will come down and they'll recharge in the wet times. This is what really provides the shock absorbing of these systems. And so even with you know pretty poor clay content, though in a high rainfall area, 
catching all the water from the roofs and the roads provides enough water to fill this pond and to create this water body. Now that fish have been introduced, they're adding a bit of well water to keep that water fresh, to keep cold, oxygen-rich water going in just in the summertime for the quality to stay high because there's no spring feeding into this. There's just this circulation system that we've added. And so it's a really test to see how well rainbow trout and lake trout will do in a system like this. Are you ready to rejuvenate landscapes, restore ecosystems, and even revive rivers? To move beyond the theory and start practicing ecosystem regeneration? To succeed, you'll need skills, support, and confidence. It's why I created the Water Stories core course, to empower you to heal landscapes and revive waterways with your own hands and heart. I've spent the past decade implementing projects all around the world. Not theoretical designs, but real results on land. I put all of the lessons I've learned from working with legends like Sepp Holzer and Rajendra Singh into this course. The Water Stories core course gives you everything you need to actualize projects on the ground and in your community. For each module, actions guide you through the experiences you'll need to become competent and then confident reading and regenerating land. From the technical aspects of earthworks and ecosystem establishment to the personal development you'll need to be effective, to providing a business roadmap for success, this course offers a transformational experience that reshapes your relationship with water, land, and life. As hopeful as I was when we began, even I've been surprised how quickly it's delivered results for our students. No matter where you live and no matter your background, you can help heal the earth with water cycle restoration. Check the link below for upcoming courses and I'll see you in class. The cover crop was really carefully selected to have different blooms at different times. This means that pollinators always have food and forage and so it's critical for providing habitat for these organisms that the rest of the food chain depends upon, but it's also a really beautiful way to have different waves of colors coming through all summer long on the landscape. In addition, while doing the project, we had a ton of woody waste. Normally this would be piled and burned, uh, but in this case, we built this wonderful hugo culture out of it. Now right out at the edge of the woods, it doesn't produce much because it doesn't get much sun. But you can see there's a lot of bee balm, goldenrod, different herbs and plants growing all throughout it. And it provides a really nice privacy barrier between us and the neighbors. And so whereas usually this resource would just be burned, contributing carbon emissions to the atmosphere, we're now putting the carbon into the ground and creating high fungal diversity soil and a privacy screen in the process. A lot of people really don't understand what's possible. They think they don't have enough land to create something of real meaning and beauty. But here you can see just in a couple of small acres, you can create a rich amount of habitat, you can create water and life and productivity on landscape, and really beautiful aesthetic areas to enjoy a high quality of life. So a lot of people ask about natural swimming pools and you can do some really wonderful things there. But to me, this is the premier kind of swimming feature. We're storing the rain, we're feeding into the ground, we're producing fish, we're producing habitat, we're producing a beautiful area and wonderful high quality water to swim. So whether you call it a water body, a pond or a natural swimming pool, a feature like this really does a lot of amazing things for the landscape and the people living there.